Okay. All right, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Monday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Do business with someone you know, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Uh, Restored Motions, restoredmotions.com, and Procharge EV, prochargev.com. Hope all the moms had a great Mother's Day yesterday. Um, we did. Got to spend, um, obviously, morning with Erica and uh, at breakfast and did uh, presents and all that sort of stuff. And um, went over to Erica's sister's house to see uh, her mom and um, uh, AKA Mimi, as many of you over the years have gotten to know. Uh, forgive me, I'm um, lacing my new SB, Wolf Gray SB uh, uh, blazers. A little tight to get my foot in there, so I gotta kind of unlace them, loosen them up, <coughs> relace them. So I'll do that while we talk here this morning. Um, <coughs> so anyway, hope all the moms had a great Mother's Day. Um, hope you were all treated fantastic and uh, had a wonderful day celebrating uh, you. Uh, LSU baseball did not do right by us. Uh, I told y'all last week, all last week, that um, you know after the Auburn series loss, that everybody loses weekends. It, it happens. The best teams ever lose weekends. Tennessee lost a weekend last year to uh, to Kentucky. Happens. Uh, LSU in 2013, the the team that was 23 and seven, best regular season record, SEC record for an LSU team in, in program history. Uh, they lost a weekend at home to South Carolina. Teams lose weekends. Um, and the Auburn thing was so weird because, you know, you won game one and then uh, game three, you never really had a chance. It was just one of those bizarre one-offs. But game two, you had uh, Ty Floyd going really, really good. And then all the, the controversy with the box happened and it threw everybody off their game and LSU didn't recover. Sucks, but it, it happened. So you lost a weekend. It happens. Um, and I, but I did say last week that if you – if they lose to Mississippi State, I'll have a very different tone. And today I'm going to have a very different tone here on AFR. And and it's and it's not because I'm going to melt or panic or do any of the things that many or yell or scream or any things that you, some of y'all probably want me to do. Because the reality is you still have the opportunity to reach every goal. Um, you know, in football, if you, when LSU lost to Texas A&M, for example, the playoff conversation went away. You know what I mean? Like we were ha when LSU beat Bama, we were having that conversation. Like, hey, LSU goes to jo goes ten and two. They beat Georgia in the SEC championship game. They were going to be the first ever two loss team in the playoff. When you lose to A and M, that's gone. So in, in in baseball, it's not exactly the way it goes, right? I mean, all of your goals are still there. Here's the problem, right? And I I laid out for y'all a couple. How oh, was it? three weeks ago, whatever it was, the scenario how LSU could could win in the postseason, right? You know, you you have a home regional, Skeens goes game one, and then, uh, I'm sorry, you, you, you're you going against a, a four who's, you know, and you literally pitch anybody in that one four matchup and you win it because, you know, you're, just, you're playing a conference champion from the SWAC or whatever it is. No disrespect to the SWAC, just, you know, we, we're just familiar um, then you, uh, you know, you pitch schemes in the marble game and you win that one. And then someone's got to play again to win and then has to come back and beat you twice in their fourth and fifth games of the weekend. So you win a regional and then super regional schemes goes game one. Can you split games two and three? I think so. You go to, we went through the whole thing, right? Here's why that series loss yesterday changes everything. It's because you are no longer a lock to be a national seed. Um, and, you know, someone here, someone here, uh, a couple of weeks ago, asked me, had LSU locked up a national seed when they swept Bama? And I said, I said, no, because you have three weekends left and 
what if you lose three weekends? I mean, the, ultimately, that number that you always try to get to is 20 wins in conference play, and that pretty much locks you up. Well, for LSU to get there, now they got to go sweep Georgia because you've lost back-to-back -back weekends. Not only have you lost back-to-back -back weekends, you just lost a home series to the worst team in the conference. Uh, the committee also looks at how you're playing at the end of the season. So the really unfortunate part is a team like Auburn, for example, who, or Tennessee, struggle to begin, and they're sort of streaking now. They're going to be looked at more favorably in the committee's eyes because they're playing well now. It's sort of a recency bias, but it's a, it, but it's a real thing. So not only do you not have a national seed locked up anymore, um, but we also talked about how if you did have a national seed locked up, you could also go to Hoover and not pitch Paul Skeens. You could give your big horse, you could skip a start for him, give him a week off and really let him get ready for June. Well, now you probably don't have that luxury. Now you could go sweep Georgia this weekend. And if you do, you're at 20 conference wins and you've probably locked up a national seed. If you go sweep Georgia this weekend, you win two out of three, Kind of depends what happens the rest of the, um, you know, in the rest of the country, uh, rest of the conference, all that sort of stuff to see how it may play out. But you ha now, there we go. You haven't locked up a national seed, so you have to go all in against Georgia, and you're probably going to have to go play in Hoover to win, if not to win the whole thing, to win a couple of games there meaning you're going to need schemes to pitch instead of giving them a week off. All those things now change your postseason outlook. Um, we can talk about yesterday uh, and, and what happened. I mean, yesterday is completely excusable. And, I mean, to be up 13-4 to four and to lose is... Uh, the game two loss on Saturday, while that sucked... I can stomach that from this perspective. Um, you were up four to two, Floyd was great, and you went Ackenhouse and Heard. That's exactly what you did last weekend in a closeout game one. Heard gave you a six out close against Alabama two weeks ago in game two. I, I can stomach losing or a blown save if the other team puts good swings on your guy, right? You make good you make good pitches, the other guy puts good swings on it. What I can't stomach is like what happened game three against Auburn, where you walk seven guys in the first inning, uh, and you, you bury yourself before you've even gotten going. That So like as much as game two sucked, I can handle it because by and large, they hit. Um... Yesterday to blow a 13 to 4 lead is a is a collapse in every sense. Um it's a collapse defensively, it's a collapse on the mound, it's taking your eye off the ball, pun sort of intended. Offensively, <clears throat> you know, LSU got up 13 to 4 and stopped scoring because they felt like they didn't have to. Uh LSU was up 13 to four after five and didn't score again. They had five more opportunities to hit and didn't score again. Like, yes, the bullpen imploding uh, was bad, but so too was your offense deciding they were gonna coast the rest of the way and not finishing the game. Um, as far as pitching, you know, I always say, and one of the ones that I think I got asked the most about yesterday was, uh, or well, there were two. I think there were two decisions. Um, one was when they went to Gavin Guidry. So, Coleman goes two and two-thirds. You got a runner on third with two outs in the third inning. Um, you're, you're up three to nothing. Um, cause you got the, you got the three run homer. 
Um, and so Coleman, if you walk the leadoff guy, anyway, Coleman had a 24 pitch second inning. Here you go. He, he walked Mershon and then Mershon stole second and stole third. Um, but Coleman got a strikeout and then he got a second strikeout after Mershon stole third. So you had two outs and a runner on third. You're up three to one, or three to nothing, excuse me. And at this point, Coleman's at 50 pitches, and you got uh, Jordan, their cleanup hitter, coming up to the plate. He's a righty. Coleman, of course, is a lefty. So you better believe that that LSU coaches are in the dugout looking at, at the splits and looking at how Jordan does against lefties versus righties, whatever. And... They make the decision to go to Gidry, which I'm totally fine with. Because at that point, we had seen Coleman's velo dip. Um, he was not going to come out for the fourth. I think that was pretty much evident. He was not coming out for the fourth. And so you um, so you say, okay, let's go play the percentages here and get Gidry now in this spot instead of waiting until waiting another inning or waiting to see what happens here. And so they went and got Gidry, and Gidry's first pitch was a was a slider for a called strike, and then the second pitch was a uh, was a slider that he hung a little bit, and Jordan hit it just past wide at third, and it went down the line for a double, and the run scored. Then he got a pop up to end the inning. So did it suck that Gidry didn't get the out? Yes, um, but I say this all the time, and I am consistent. I'm completely consistent with this. In baseball, a game where you fail 70% of the time and um, and you're in the Hall of Fame, a lot of times what it comes down to is, do you have sound logic behind the decision you made? And if so, um, uh, I can live with the results. So regardless of what happens. So that was my, my deal with bringing in Gidry when they did. I totally understood why they went to Gidry when they did. So he gave up a knock. I can live with the result. Um, the other one was was taking out Blake money when they did. So um, little imploded again. You brought in Blake money. Um, you know, hang on, let's just back to BP. see my shoes now as well. Um, Money got the ground ball double play to get out of the inning, which was a big moment. Some suggested maybe they should have stu stuck with Money. Um, but you had Ackenhausen, and Ackenhausen has been one of your best arms out of the bullpen, and Money has not. So you go to Ackenhausen, which I can understand doing that, and Ackenhausen doesn't record an out. Uh, he throws a wild pitch. Um, sorry. We saw how it went, right? Well, at that point then, it's like, all right, you would have liked to have seen Ackenhausen maybe get you home or preserve the lead, and it just didn't happen. And so then you go to Collins and then to Dutton and then to Cooper, and we all know what happened. So anyway, um, yeah, no, there's like, there's just... I mean, every player is going to say it. Every coach is going to say it. It's inexcusable. Um, there is there is no justification for that, especially against that team, to be up 13-4 to four in such a pivotal game and to completely collapse in every phase of the game. Um, like, there is just there's, – there's no justification. There's no um, – there is no excuse. So – 
you do one of two things, right? You have a game like that, a collapse like that, you go one of two ways. You're either really embarrassed by it and it motivates you to be better, or you cave. And so we'll see what this team does. Um, you got to go to Georgia this weekend. Um, Georgia is a, uh, is a weird park. Uh, I hate Georgia's field. Now, that's a team that, like we talked about this past weekend, the schedule falls in your favor because Georgia presently is dead last in the SEC East. Georgia is at 10 and 17 overall. Um, and um, sorry. Georgia's at 10 and 17 in the East. Uh, just got swept at Missouri, which is a really bad baseball team. Um, they did win a home series against Tennessee two weekends ago, who had kind of been streaking. So, I mean, same old, right? I mean, we talked about it. The schedule plays in your favor, but you just gagged away a home series against Mississippi State. So what are you to believe they're going to do against Georgia? Oh, go prove it. Let's see. Okay, let's say some good mornings here. Uh, Kelly Gross, hey, Dad. Good morning, Megan Hurst. Eric uh, Gullett, good morning. David Tolson, Earl, good morning. Man, if we lose the series at Georgia, we may lose our top eight seed. That's, yeah, that's where I started. Um, you know. Uh, David Tolson, let's see. Tanya Grant, so now we talk about it. Now we talk about what, Tanya? See, like, if if all you're going to do is be the person that um, just craps on the bullpen, then what you're what you're doing, and this this is what annoys me, and I'm not trying to come down on you because I know I'm going to feel feel a lot of this today. What annoys me greatly is when people, and I I talked about this yesterday. I despise the type of fan that refuses to acknowledge when their team does things well waits for them to fail and pounces on the negative. I understand like LSU's bullpen, like it's not like they have a staff ERA of two, but we have also seen Ty Floyd over the last month be really stinking good. We've seen Javen Coleman come back from a UCL and progress to where he's been a viable option for you. Thatcher Hurd, until, look, he blew a save on Saturday. It, it happened to Mariano Rivera. Happens literally the best ever. It's going to happen to college kids. He blew a save. Thatcher Hurd over the last month had been really good as they found a role for him. I'm not telling you that they're Griffin Herring, Gavin Guidry have both been good for you this year. I'm not telling you that they have the deepest bullpen of dudes that are infallible. What I'm telling you is they've had stuff that has gone well for them at times this year, and you, and ignoring those to only point out the negative is something that, like, I'm not going to do, and that's just an illustration of, of fans that don't watch enough baseball because everybody has failure in baseball, and you have to become okay with failure because it happens. Now, blowing a 13-4 to lead is completely unconscionable to that team. And I will not defend that because there is no defense for that. That's like, I'm going to do some, some show prep today and try to find something comparable as far as worst losses in recent memory. And I like nothing came to mind off the top when I think of worst losses. Um, that was heinous. I mean, yesterday was heinous. There's no way around it. And, and I don't know if this team... Well, I hope they bounce back from it um, because where we started today, all of your opportunities aren't gone, but so much of your opportunity starts with being a national seed and you have totally put that into question now. Uh, Sean Gasser, Matt, have you watched the new movie Air yet? I have not, but I do want to see it. Uh, Trey Potan, good morning. Brant Roban, Ryan Amanda Gidry, Bob Poole, what's going on? Uh, let's see. 
Tim Gotro, Larry Garner, Jesse Brown, Carlton Cisco, Go Tigers, uh, Caleb Lemoyne. Uh, we won't make it past regional. So I'll disagree with that. And I've heard that too. And that's a, listen, something else, Caleb, that I would suggest under like, and this is the point that I was making two or three weeks ago, whenever it was. Keep in mind how a regional is structured. And this is where a lot of you are, are missing it. Okay. The last two weeks, both Auburn and Mississippi state made a conscious decision to pitch backwards against LSU. Okay. They realized our best guy isn't going to be Paul Skeens. So let's take the L on Friday. Let's throw our best guy on Saturday. And each of the last two weeks, it's worked by the hardest, but it's worked. And then last week against Auburn in game three, LSU, well, the last two Sundays, LSU imploded, as we saw. Um, in a regional setting, LSU will play a 1 4 matchup. Okay. So you're not going to throw Paul Skeens in your first game. You're going to throw literally anybody in your first game. Uh, maybe you throw Ty Floyd, um, or maybe you throw, maybe you go bullpen day like you just did yesterday with Javen Coleman. Um, you got options. Um, like you do a midweek game, you could start that your herd, you could start Blake Money, you can start whatever you want on in a 1 4 matchup. You win that, you go to the Marvel game, now you got Paul Skeens. The team that you face will have had to have thrown their number one guy, whoever it is, will have had to throw their number one in game one in the 2 3 matchup to get to the Marvel game so as not to go through the loser's bracket. So you're not going to be facing anybody's ace pitching backwards because you don't have, the other teams won't have the option of doing that in regional play. Because you can't just you can't just take the L in game one because then you have to come through the loser's bracket. So you have to win your first game in regionals. Um, so no, so L like LSU should be fine in regional play. It is very fair at this point to say, can LSU win a super regional, especially if they have to go on the road, which they may now because they may not be a national seed based on whatever happens this weekend. Uh, Caleb Lemoyne, let's see, Jesse Post, good morning, Matt. Can't stop laughing. To keep from crying, can we tap into LSU S or LSU E to find some relief pitching? Uh, Barry Jocelyn, Trivia Carter, Joey Metke, good morning. Jesse Brown, Jeff Hawk, good morning. Alex DeVillier, uh, still don't understand calling for 97 curveballs in a row. Feel like Les Miles versus Bama when we had Fournette. Um, I think you, so you said 97 curveballs in a row. You're going to have to be more specific about like a circumstance that you're talking about. Like if you bring in a pitcher that like if you bring in Bryce Collins, for example, like Bryce Collins is a breaking ball pitcher. That's what he throws. If he throws a fastball, he's throwing an 86 mile an hour belt high fastball. Any college hitter is going to crush that. Like you throw the pitch that you command best. So if that's what you're talking about, I don't know. Uh, Weston Weaver, do we push the panic button yet? I mean, Weston, it's just not in my nature to sit here and melt and panic. Um, that was massively disappointing. Like there's no way around it. And you have likely, uh, unless if you go out, you, you have undeniably made whatever trek through the postseason you were going to take more difficult because you now do not have a national seed locked up. You got to go on the road. Now Georgia's in the last place in the East, but State was last place in the West. You have to win this series, and likely on top of that, because even if you win two out of three, that puts you at 19 conference wins. I don't think that's a lock for a national seed, especially considering you ju just had a terrible series loss. So you're probably going to have to go to Hoover and win a game or two there as well, meaning you're going to have to throw Paul Skeens, which is not ideal. I would have preferred to just give Paul Skeens the week off to win a series against State, win a series against Georgia, be at 21 conference wins and not need to do a darn thing in Hoover and let Paul Skeens take a week off uh, to get ready for June. But now you probably don't have that option. So, I mean, that there is no way around it, man. That implosion yesterday cost you tremendously. Um, Wendell Norman, good morning, Matt. How concerned are you on a scale of 1 to 10 around a bullpen struggles? Um... 
it probably depends on what day of the week we're talking, what game in a series we're talking about. Um, last week against Auburn, we saw Ackenhaus and Hurd close out behind Skeens. They did great. Um, I like Gavin Gidry. I mean, there's there's pieces in the bullpen I like. Um, when you get down to a situation like yesterday, where you use nine pitchers, that's terrifying. That's a that's a ten out of ten. Because if you get into a situation where you have to run nine pitchers out there, that just means you can't throw the ball over the plate. You can't get outs. Um, my goodness, even in the tenth, I mean, yeah, like. We can talk about the bullpen, of course, but everything was a letdown. Again, offensively, you didn't score after the fifth. And defensively, look at what happened. Riley Cooper, in the 10th, with a runner on third, got the ground ball to first. He got the ground ball he needed. This is going to be a ground ball double play. It's going to get you out of the 10th. And Jared Jones, the throw down to second, he fields the ball cleanly, throws to second, he throws it wide, it pulls Thompson wide, so he can't make the relay throw to first for the double play. It's going to get you out of the inning. Cost you the game. Well, I mean, look. That was the game-winning run. Okay. Uh, a lot cost you the game. But my point is, like, Cooper got you the ground ball double play you needed right there. He got you the ground ball you needed for the double play, and you don't execute behind him. Um, you had a chance to win at bottom nine. Lead off walk. And, of course, they bring in Ben to pull to try to bunt. To all y'all people who love the bunt. How did that work out for you? You gave up an out against a team that stunk. You gave up an out and you strand a runner at third because they end up walking Cruz. They walk uh, uh, Tommy White to load the bases for Malazzo, who is in as a defensive replacement for Travinsky, and Malazzo pops foul to first base and you're out of it. So, yeah. Justin McCrary, it's like Trey should be playing first. Justin McCrary, you're high. Like, you're seriously high. If that's... if. If that's your takeaway, you are bleeping high because you scored 13 runs yesterday, friend. If you think that's the reason, you are bleeping high. If you think Jared Jones, his 300 average and his 14 homers don't need to be in the lineup, or Hayden Travinsky, who's hitting like 400 in conference play, like if you think those guys don't need to be in the lineup so Trey Morgan can play first, you are high. Like I have, that is one thing today I will have no tolerance for. Like that is, that is quintessential. You are stupid baseball person. That's what you are. That is so stupid. If you are, if you at this point, when you've watched Trey Morgan and left make diving catches, running catches into the wall, seen as good as he is defensively and the bats that you have and the way you win by getting guys like Beloso or um, Bear Jones in the lineup at first base. If you can't understand that simple piece of baseball, you and I cannot have a conversation because that is that is that is the thing that will set me off today because that is fundamentally stupid. It's fundamentally stupid. Oh my god! Like, I, I mean, I know I'm gonna deal with a lot today because LSU fans are what they are, and yesterday was heinous. I'm not excusing yesterday at all, but like, those of you that are just unconscionable to begin with have become completely unbearable, and days like this make me want to just, like, quit my job. All right, I'm leaving. Have a wonderful day. Trey Moore.